Right back, like tonight, here on In Focus. Civic Movement, the United Democratic Front, recently marked its 40th anniversary. Founding member Popo Mulefe uh, called on young people to go out in their numbers to vote during next year's election. Mulefe joins us now to talk more about uh, their re emergence. Dr. Mulefe, good to have you, and thank you very much uh, for your time and coming on tonight uh, here uh, on In Focus. Fresh out of uh, a rather busy weekend of celebrations and I'm sure uh, of, 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 of planning. Uh, many have been. Uh, maybe lost in the conversations that you have been having building up to this uh, 40th anniversary and uh, are sitting and they're asking themselves why the re-emergence of this disbanded uh, uh, organization? What are you looking at? The timing of it? Uh, is this because of failure of leadership or is it just because the time is right? Uh, wh why, why are you coming back into the fray of politics in particular? Uh, Tabo, the, the reemergence is really of the spirit and values of the UDF, its ethos, uh, its method of organization and operating, its democratic princip uh, practices, is what we are reviving. We're not reviving the organization per se. You're asking why? We're doing it because I increasingly we have observed that uh, what we fought for, those wonderful values, the principle, and the commitment to serving the people have been dissipating. And as a consequence thereof, the very democracy that we fought so hard for, uh, that so many people died for, uh, that many sacrificed for in various ways, uh, is now clearly under threat. Yeah. Uh, and therefore, we are saying that uh, as a society, we can't continue to keep quiet, thinking that a small number of people who are public representatives in the councils, the provinces, and in the national government would save this democracy. That we achieved democracy through mass mobilization, mass struggles, uh, the tenacity and resilience of our people, the determination that uh, was seen in the unity that we sh showed at uh, Mitchell's play. And therefore, if we are to do something to stop this spiraling down of the achievements that we had made, we do need to get everybody out of their armchairs, out of being purely, merely, you know, uh, social media activists, right. to become real activists who galvanize communities, who ignite the, the, the energies of our people and reintroduce the spirit and the values of the UDF in order that those who are in public office could be held accountable, that they can't sit in, they shouldn't sit in office in the name of the people, yet not saving those people. Yeah. How, how, so basically what, 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 what does that community-based, uh, as you put it, democratic uh, activism actually looks like? Because one would say uh, uh, at the time of the UDF, of course, you had an illegitimate apartheid government. It was easier to mobilize and get everybody uh, uh, around the same cause. Today, you have a democratic government in place. You have people who are able to vote. Others are voting for the very same party. Others vote for an, another party. So the, the effect and the impact of a, of a movement uh, or the spirit of UDF would be, would be uh, negligible. What, what were people fighting for? They were fighting for fundamental rights. Those rights are now in the Constitution. The first generation of those rights being civil, civil rights, which allow us universal franchise to vote, as you are saying. But there is the second generation of rights that has to do with meeting the socio-economic uh, rights of the people, making sure that People can go ahead, get clean drinking water. That people don't die like they were dying the other day in Hammerskral uh, of cholera. Yeah. That people have access to basic education of a quality nature. 
that they have access to primary uh, health care, that the, in the schools there is proper governance, that people have the voice there, but that the, the challenges of unemployment that have spiraled to a point of between 38 and 42 percent, that that is arrested, that we force those in authority who have the budget to invest in both social and economic infrastructure to create jobs for the people. We force the private sector itself not to enjoy having pictures with the president and appearing in front uh, pages of uh, newspapers, but to go down in communities where their workers come from and make sure that the conditions of those very people, yeah. uh, the, the masses, yeah. are improved so that they too can have their dignities restored. I'm sure you understand why, why there are some who would be skeptics to what you're saying, because they would look at you and say, well, for example, Popo, what was holding you back from doing so for the last three decades, when you yourself were in, 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 in key positions uh, within uh, the, the state apparatus. And uh, looking at some of your fellow uh, members of the UDF saying, you guys are now driving big cars, living in big houses. They're not even sure whether you can steal toy toy. Uh, 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 and and uh, you, you, you've just been comfortable in those spaces and you did nothing for the three decades. But that is uh, wrong, uh, Tabo, to say that. We started the government. I was part of government. I was premier for 10 years. We demonstrated that uh, we understood that our business uh, for being in government was to serve the people. We never used to use our positions in government to get into business or to give tenders to our friends. And I was saying that uh, our assessment is that the first 15 years of the democratic government saw a lot of progress. Municipalities throughout the country, even those who, which were poor in this far-flung small towns of the country, were functional. People were receiving services. We began to regress, I think, in the, uh, in the second decade, second part of the decade, the second decade of our governance. Uh, that's when we began to see uh, local government collapsing. Our principles of Batupili were civil servants were seen as agents of change and servants of the people began to dissipate. More and more people began to think selfishly of themselves they saw government as some kind of an ATM where they would uh, just uh, draw money for themselves, make themselves rich. Many more in political parties. So being in positions of political parties and in government as something that brings them into control of the feeding trough mm. that they are all raping for. I mean, you can even see now with all of these uh, so-called coalitions, uh, it's just about transactional arrangements where they are allocating positions to one another. And important, of course, uh, departments where there are huge budgets because those enable them to give uh, tenders contracts to, to their cronies because then the cronies would give them the money back through the back door. Yeah. So things changed. Right. Uh, when we started, we thought that all of us believed in the same values. Right. We had the same commitments to our people. We thought so, but we were wrong. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, the UDF allowed those community structures, what we used to call organs of people's power, that we had created street committees, civic associations, women's groups, the youth groups that existed, their self-defense units against which fought against violence and crime. We allowed all of those to, to dissipate or to collapse. Now, we are saying, instead of us throwing our, our hands in the air, 
we should say we have a responsibility collectively yes. to remobilize our people to say you and you alone are your own liberators. Right. What will this require? For example, I mean, one would say we are dealing with a, a, a new kind of, of, of challenge in South Africa today. Let's take a typical uh, situation, a scenario that we're dealing with. You're saying you're going to do events that empower community uh, organizations, certainly to take back their power. We are dealing with a parapala report. The, the South African Reserve Bank has just uh, uh, said, well, the, the transaction was not perfected and, 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 and therefore uh, the entity had no legal obligation to that. What is our responsibility as uh, democratic activists in this particular instance? What, what, are we, uh, what, what are we to do? Well, our responsibility um, is to fight to get the truth out of the institutions that we have created. And you can only do so if you, have, you build the power of the people, you build the voice of the people, uh, you energize the people to say, you ain't gonna have a, a blank check when you get into parliament claiming to represent us whether it is in national parliament, provincial legislature, or local government, whether you are in the executive of the national government of the province, I think all of us must be held accountable in accordance with the values of our constitution. The constitution is very clear about what is just and what is uh, equitable and what is right. Uh, uh, we've got to apply that constitution to make sure that everyone accounts. So you're saying where we are sitting now, we, we can no longer fully trust state apparatus to, to, to effect the kind of anti-corruption uh, activity that we want to see? Certainly, Tabo. Uh, the organs of state were uh, uh, weakened by the the state capture, as you know, uh, almost the hawks and uh, the NPA were almost destroyed. Uh, I'm sure uh, it is not so long that I launched an, a mandamus application to compel the NPA under Mr. Sean Abrams and the hawks to explain to the South African public why they were refusing to investigate and prosecute on the massive corruption that had happened at Prasa. Uh, I, I launched that mandamus application. They were simply refusing. But I appreciate the fact that since then, there has been a rebuilding of those institutions, the reconstruction of them, the cleaning up of those institutions. And uh, they have now begun... Uh, uh, you know, taking a turn now to ensure that they focus on uh, protecting the interests of the people. The SIU, through the special tribunals, uh, has been doing a very fantastic job recovering the monies that thieves had stolen from uh, several institutions uh, uh, of the state, public uh, state-owned companies. So we we... I think we have begun rebuilding and consolidating those institutions, but we are not anywhere near uh, achieving, you know, the ideal yeah. uh, performance of uh, these institutions. So, one, you see, maybe what 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 we are seeking is a a social reengineering uh, to to the uh, to the type of compact that uh, you had uh, w with the UDF, but. One could say, how different would that be from uh, the, uh, what is it called now? Is it the Charter for, for South Africa, the new Charter for South Africa? It was previously called the Moonshot Pact, but they, they, they've changed that now. Uh, a multi-party charter, I think, uh, for South Africa is what they, they are calling it. How different would what you're calling for be from that? Well, we are talking about reconstructing that society that we had envisioned in the Declaration of the UDF, in the Freedom Charter, and now in the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. It is that society that we set out to build 
that we fought for. It, it, it had nothing to do with who governs the country. It was about creating conditions for the, the people to govern as per the, 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 the dictum set out in the Freedom Charter, enshrined in the Freedom Charter, when it said the people shall govern. We, we, we fought, we got the freedom. Where we are now, we say, let the people govern. The people must govern now. This is what we are saying. You can go to the moon and do all of those things. I don't know we, we, who, who, who are many of those people. We are talking about the revolutionary camp of the people that fought for freedom, that understands the value of the constitution that we have, and that understand the sacrifices which were made uh, in order to attain that constitution. I mean, we lost many fine, fine revolutionaries of our movement. You know, the Cred of Four, the Pepco Three, Victoria Mprenge, uh, David Webster, Stanza Bupape, Mos Chikani, many other comrades who fought for freedom disappear. Peter, Peter and Chabeleng, uh, and many more. So, so what we are saying is that we want to make sure that those things that we fought for yeah. are reconstructed. Right. In a sense, we reclaim our democracy, reassert the voice of the people, right. not about fighting for one party to get out of office, but fighting to reconnect with the people and make right. sure that power returns to the people. That if I'm out of time. We'll have this conversation once again soon. Much appreciated. Thank you for coming on. Thank you very much, Tom. That is uh, probably for the of uh, uh, the uh, UDF, one of the founding members. They celebrated their 40th uh, uh, anniversary uh, just uh, the other day. All right.